doing an intro for the next, um, this is going to be the next video essay kind of about the, the death of Hollywood, right? It's exemplified or kind of a harbinger focusing on one specific producer in the mid-level, the mid-budgeted Hollywood film, which was the lifeblood of Hollywood for a while. And I'm referring to the producer I, I came to know a little bit in St. Louis. His name was Mark Rosenberg. His brother, uh, Alan Rosenberg, was the president of SAG um, back in 07, 08. That was my first strike as a WGA member, and he was very involved. It was not the same scenario as the 23 strike. The negotiations didn't quite dovetail the same way, but he was very supportive, was at a lot of WGA events, including the big meeting in uh, the Santa Monica Civic Center, which I talk about in detail, and my Strike TV uh, segment, which has some new weight I talk about, you know, um, kind of the skullduggery the studios were producing there. Anyhow, Mark Rosenberg produced, uh, the first time I meet him in St. Louis, I was there at the time, um, kind of finishing up, not finishing up, but I was kind of transferring, you know, I was going to school there and transferred the credits back to Marquette University in Milwaukee. I'm in between the two mob stories, between being in St. Louis and working indirectly for Balistrieri and some of those guys, and then Chicago and, and some of those guys. So anyhow, uh, it's the fall of 1988. Uh, Major League has came out that Rosenberg produced. His partner is uh, uh, Sidney Pollack. His other producing partner is his wife, um, Paula Weinstein, Spring Creek, right? So Major League was already out, and that's kind of, that's not, that's not really the kind of picture I'm talking about. That's more of a, you know, a sports comedy capitalizing on Bull Durham and all that kind of thing. Um, this, what he's getting ready to shoot, I think they're either getting ready to go to Seattle because they're going to do the Fabulous Baker Boys, which comes out in the fall of 89. And that's when the whole White Palace crew is uh, coming to St. Louis and they're shooting uh, White Palace, which is based on a Glenn Savon book, based in St. Louis. James Spader, Susan Sarandon, and um, directed by Luis Mandoki. Um, they had around that time. That's when Fabulous Baker Boys is coming out, and I see that in the fall of '89. And um, after that, then White Palace comes out in 1990, and then in '92, Flesh and Bone. That's Steve Clovis's first film as Fabulous Baker Boys. He's better known as the writer of some of the Harry Potter films, screenwriter who ends up directing some of them. Uh, it's very interesting. A filmmaker, a young filmmaker, he's definitely influenced by Bergman. You can see it a little bit in some of the scenes in Fabulous Baker Boys, much more in something like uh, Flesh and Bone. There's almost kind of a virgin spring vibe, and different elements, very Bergman-esque. And it just shows how the business changes radically. Mark Rosenberg dies of a heart attack on the set of Flesh and Bone. And, you know, in some ways, not just he, but he represents kind of that mid-level, mid-budget Hollywood picture that, that the business flourished under. In the old studio system, you know, it wasn't the, the big, you know, kind of awards-type film, but a good, solid, well-made film and, and, and pictures like it that were the lifeblood of the business that just went away. And so I'm going to talk about that, um, specifically focusing on Rosenberg and my experience with White Palace, which was really shaky. <laughs> I was going through some personal stuff as a, just a young, young kid, practically out of high school, just kind of a mess. But um, we talk about that, and as well as... Clovis and Fabulous Baker Boys and, and just the kind of pictures that they were making. I think it'd be very instructive. We'll continue on.